All right, let's graph again. The next example is a very nice one because it will be the first example where we're going to compute a whole uh, in a function. So let's graph the function x ln of x. So as usual, the first thing that you do is you compute the domain. Here, there's no division, there's no even roots, but there's a logarithmic term, but it's, it's the basic one. So you don't want zero in it, or you don't want something strictly negative. So the domain here is from zero open to infinity. So two open um, endpoints. So this means that there's two uh, important limits to set up. One at infinity. I always like to start with the infinite. It does not really matter. And then the second one will be approaching zero from the right. So the two limits that you have to set up are the following. So here we go. So boom. Okay, so the limit going to infinity for x ln x and also the limit going to zero plus. As usual here, it's very, very crucial that you first simply define the important limit. You don't have to worry about computing them. Of course, you have to compute them at some point. But the true thing here is really to focus on just setting them up. There's two open endpoints, two important limits. So the first one, if we just do it right away, replace x by infinity, you get infinity, ln of infinity, ln of infinity is infinity, and infinity times infinity, you just get infinite. So as it gets bigger, as x gets bigger, the function will just go up forever. Now, what about zero plus? So the first thing to realize here is that if you plug zero, you would get a ln of zero. So you cannot plug zero. So this is your green light. You can plug zero plus. So you get zero plus times ln of zero plus. Zero plus just goes to zero. And ln of zero plus goes to minus infinity. And of course, that's bad. It's a bad product. You need to flip something. Um, when you have to flip something, and one of the two terms is a logarithmic term. The one that you never flip is a logarithmic term. So here, if you rearrange your limit, you're going to get the following one. So I'm bringing my x downstairs. Okay, so you get the limit of x ln x as x approaches 0 plus is the same as the limit as x approaches 0 plus of ln of x over 1 over x. So, of course, if you plug 0 in there, you still have ln of 0 which is bad, or 1 over 0, so that's really bad. But if you plug 0 plus, what you're going to get here, you're going to get ln of 0 plus, which is minus infinity, over 1 over 0 plus, which is infinity. So this is not a surprise when you have a bad product and you flip one of the two terms, you will get either uh, infinity over infinity, up to a sign, or 0 over 0. So it's still bad, but now we can apply hospital rules. So if you differentiate... Uh, ln of x, you're going to get 1 over x, and the derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared, so boom, so you get this brand new limit. Now, if you flip the fraction and you cancel terms, this is always really crucial that you that you, um, that you you simplify your expression, so this can be simplified to minus x, and then if you put 0 in there, you're going to get 0, and then if you get 0, what does that mean? It means that you have a whole at zero zero and that's the that's the crucial part here so we have something brand new okay so we have a hole at zero zero and we have to illustrate that later okay so it's um it's a, it's a first example where we're getting that hole okay and you always get a hole like a lot of people ask like how do you know if it's a hole or a vertical asymptote so if you compute a limit left or right around a number and you get a number, like in this case, on the right side of zero, we got zero, then we get the whole zero, zero. Okay, so it's it's always when you compute a limit around a point, if you get a number, you get uh, you get a whole. If you get plus or minus infinity, then you get a vertical uh, asymptote. All right, so those two steps are done. Now we can move on to the computation of f prime. And f prime prime, so for f prime, it's a product rule. The derivative of x is 1 times the second one plus the first one times the derivative of ln, which is 1 over x, which simplifies to ln of x plus 1. 1 times ln of x is ln. x times 1 over x is just 1. Now, if you differentiate again, the derivative of ln is 1 over x 
Just both one is zero. That's it. That's how. So very short and sweet limits. Now we're ready to study them. Uh, when is f prime undefined? Well, we have ln of x plus one. It's undefined if x is less or equal than zero, but this is not a surprise. This is the same restriction as we got from the original function. When is it equal to zero? This one is a, is a trickier one because you need to do some algebra here. So you need to solve ln of x plus one is equal to zero. So this is a logarithmic equation. You need to isolate the long term. So you get ln of x equal to minus one. If you exponentiate on both sides, you get that x is e to the power of minus one, which can be approximated. Like for those questions, two decimal is enough here. So 0 0.37. So we have a critical point of the form f prime is zero when x is 0 0.37. Now, same thing for f prime prime. When does it crash? Well, it crashes at zero, but we don't care because it's not even part of the domain. When is it equal to zero? Here we have a numerator that is one, so that is never going to happen. So to some extent, this, inter this is an example that is kind of interesting because we get a hole and we get like a critical point that is not just a nice number that you need to uh, compute and solve using your algebraic skills. So here we go. So only one important point here, 0 0.37 in the table. Before 0 0.37, remember thinking about the domain here. So from 0 to 0 0.37 and then after 0 0.37. So thinking about the domain, you don't need to care about 0 or before because we know everything is just undefined there. So why is 0 0.37 there? Because the first derivative is 0. Now we're ready to evaluate our sign table. So between 0 and 0 0.37, I'm going to use 0 0.1. And if you use your calculator, ln of 0 0.1 plus 1 is actually going to give you something negative. And then if you pick a number bigger, like for example, bigger than 0 0.37, for example, 1, one of one plus one is zero plus one, which is positive. And then for f prime prime, we have one over x. Of course, if x is positive, you're going to get a bunch of pluses here right away. So what about the shape of the function? So the first minus in f prime for the interval zero to 0 0.37 tells me that the function is decreasing initially. And then I just have to add up concavity the function is decreasing, but concave up. And let me just draw a better arrow here so you won't see this, but decreasing concave up. And then for 0.37 to infinity, my function is increasing because of the plus for f prime. And then because of the plus for the second derivative, we know that it's going to be increasing concave up. So what's up at point 37? Well, we have a local minimum, so local minimum. Again here, I'm not computing any, anything. I just see I'm at the bottom of the valley. I have a local minimum at 0 0.37. All right, so what are the good points to start with? So we have 0 0.37. So if you use your function here, so I'm just going to write it on the side so that you can see it. So remember the function is x ln of x. Step six is just about evaluating your function. If you replace x by 0 0.37 in that function, you can double check that it gives you minus 0 0.37. Uh, zero is not part of the domain. Is there a quick x value that gives me zero here? Well, if x is one, so a nice point here, if x is one, the function will be zero. That's an x-intercept. So because of the ln of x, I know that when x is one, ln of x is zero. So here we go. So what do we draw here? So I have my two starting points, my blue point, point 0.37, point minus point 0.37, my x-intercept, one, zero. I know I have a hole. I already drew the hole here at zero, zero. And now I'm ready to draw my graph using the shape of my step five. So I know that between zero and 0 0.37, my function is decreasing concave up. And then from 0 0.37 to infinity, my function will be increasing concave up. Yay. 
Okay, so that's my that's my shape. So decreasing concave up from zero to zero point thirty seven, and then increasing concave up from zero point thirty seven to infinity. I see that at zero point thirty seven, I have a local minimum. So again, once you have the graph in your face, I know I'm annoying, but once you have the graph in your face, so we have a graph for it. The first thing you think about, next thing you think about is. Is this graph consistent with your domain, your important limits, and the shape of uh, step five? So what about the domain? So here we see this graph starts at zero and goes to infinity. So it's consistent with the domain in point one. What about the important limits? Well, we found together that the, this function as x goes to infinity goes to infinity. So I see it on the graph. This function goes up forever to infinity. On the right side, as it approaches zero plus, it approaches zero. This white dot, this hollow dot tells us that, so it's consistent with the second limit too. So we have consistency with step two. What about the shape? Decreasing from zero to 0 0.37, reaching a local minimum, and then increasing from 0 0.37 to infinity, and then it's always concave up. So it's consistent with step five. All right, and really that example was to sh show you an example where we have a graph with a hole. All right, for that section, there's another example, but I'll let you work on it as an exercise. It's very nice, very important. But for this section, very, very important section, the biggest section we've worked to come here. It brings everything together, domain, important limits, and now derivatives and the sign tables of those derivatives with their interpretation. These are like perfect questions to really fully master everything that we've seen in this course. Not difficult questions, but, you know, long questions that really summon everything. All right. So for that section, that's it. That's all. Bye-bye.